Hello, I'm Suzanne Verdi, and I'm here to report on one of the most dreadful, global, life-threatening situations we've had to overcome in modern times. This film is personal for me because I live just a stone's throw away from the beauty of the Cotswolds, and I love to come here to enjoy everything this unique area has to offer. On March the 11th, 2020, the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus outbreak a pandemic. Broadway Village in the Cotswolds has a rich and varied history. It's one of the oldest known settlements in the United Kingdom, dating back 5,000 years to the Mesolithic period. This film documents how Broadway Village coped with the rules and restrictions imposed upon the small community by the government and how that community dealt with the day-to-day -day challenges they brought. On Friday the 20th of March, the UK government said all schools, pubs, clubs, restaurants, cinemas and gyms had to shut immediately. And then, three days later, the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, ordered a three-week total national lockdown, unprecedented in our time. Cafes and shops had to shut their doors and close down immediately. Everyone was told to stay at home. But the most alien measure was about to be introduced, social distancing. The Cotswolds were about to be hit extremely hard as annual tourism is normally worth over £1 billion to the local economy, which attracts around 23 million visitors from all over the world, employing more than 20,000 staff. In an unprecedented move, the Prime Minister wrote to every household in the UK in an attempt to unite the nation to comply with all the new restrictions and regulations. On Thursday the 16th of April, the government extended the lockdown, with 4.5 billion in containment to stem the worldwide pandemic. On Friday the 1st of May, over 3 million coronavirus cases are reported worldwide. A week later, the UK is the first country in Europe to top 30,000 deaths. Listen as these two young girls recite a very poignant poem. The history books will talk of now that time the world is still, when every family stayed at home waved out from windowsills at those they loved but could not hold because they loved them so. Yet whilst they did they noticed all the flowers start to grow. The sun came out, they can recall, and windows rainbows filled. They kicked a football in their yards until the night drew in. They walked each day, but not too close, that time the world stood still. When people walked straight down the roads, that once the cars did fill. They saw that people became ill, they knew the world was scared. 
But whilst the world stood still, they saw how much the whole world cared. They clapped on Thursdays from their doors. They cheered for the brave, for people who risked their lives so others could be saved. The schools closed down, they missed their friends, they missed their teachers so. Their mums and dads helped with their work, they helped their minds to grow. Their parents used to worry that as schools were put on hold, the children wouldn't have the tools they need as they grow old. But history books will talk of them now adults fully grown. The little boys and girls back then, the ones who stayed at home, they'll tell you that they fixed this world of all they would fulfil. The rainbow children building dreams they dreamed whilst time stood still. The Rainbow Children's Poem by Gemma Peacock reminds us of all the hope we see reflected in our children and it also reminds us to look for the positives in our current situation. Thank you NHS. Thank you NHS. Thank you, NHS. During the summer, for several weeks on each Thursday at 8 o'clock p.m., the whole community came out of their homes and into the streets, clapping their hands for many minutes. This was a nationwide tribute to say a big thank you to all the NHS frontline workers who were battling to save lives as the pandemic tightened its grip and as the death rate continued to rise. Doorstep deliveries became a vital lifeline for village residents who were shielding and unable to leave their homes. On Friday the 8th of May, the village marked the 75th year since V-Day, as best they could during the lockdown. Wednesday the 20th of May is a grim news day as we hear confirmation of 5 million cases of the virus and 325,000 deaths throughout the world. The villagers are repeatedly reminded to heed the government's advice to stay at home, protect the NHS and to save lives. By the May bank holiday, there was a significant return of visitors as lockdown was eased. Monday the 1st of June saw some further easing that included the opening of dentists and schools. Also, up to six people were allowed to meet together. And on June the 15th, all non-essential retail shops were given the green light too. By Saturday the 4th of July, it was Independence Day for hotels, pubs, restaurants and hairdressers being allowed to reopen. But wearing a face mask becomes mandatory when entering shops. But this has started to create its own environmental problem. The beginning of August brought fresh, ever-increasing statistics to light, with 18 million cases confirmed and 700,000 deaths across the globe. Beth, what sort of impact has the pandemic had on your business? Well, we went from 100 visitors a week to zero. 
obviously very quickly. So then we had to really change how we communicated with our clients a more of a virtual online presence. We have an online presence, but we really had to think about how we could come across personally and breathe a bit of warmth and life into the paintings and sculpture that we sell. Yeah, because art's so personal. When you wander around a gallery, you get a whole different take on it. So it's different, yeah. I suppose, looking at it online. How successful has that been? Well, we've had the paintings videoed, which has been great. And we've tried to show them how the viewer would see them. So if there was a little bit of impasto, a bit of thick paint that looked quite interesting in, in the painting, we would zoom in on that or zoom in on a signature and really try and give the viewer a sort of feel of how they would be when they were viewing it. We're a really small, friendly team. We like to, to come across that way. And it's quite tricky when we can't see people face to face. You seem to have sort of bounced back through this pandemic. Has it, was it like that for right from the beginning? Um, no, I think as everybody, the world took a, a breath and everything went on pause and on ice whilst we all had to try and deal with this um, news of life changing news and also life threatening for an awful lot of people, sadly. So I think um, Broadway will certainly be one of the first places to bounce back. I think it ticks all the boxes for a lot of people. It's pretty. We've got great diverse range of shops and eateries. Um, we're in a beautiful countryside location. It's one of the top places to come and visit. So I think we'll just get stronger and stronger. And hopefully people will enjoy re-engaging with art and sculpture again. Boris Johnson on the 19th of December cancels the proposed family five-day Christmas get-together with families only having permission to meet up on Christmas Day. UK deaths exceed 75,000 and the Prime Minister imposes our third national lockdown. But the rollout of the AstraZeneca vaccine gives us all great hope. On the 20th of January, a very sad day in the UK as 1,820 people had died in a single day from the virus, with the 26th of January being an even darker day as the UK records 100,000 deaths. Scars of the business battles are in clear evidence throughout the village. Those people who rely on trade from tourism in the area were facing a mammoth challenge to try to win back lost revenues. The world-famous Ligon Arms Hotel, which dates back to the 13th century, was finally allowed to reopen its doors after a four-month and very costly shutdown. But just as the village was starting to make plans to kick-start its businesses, the whole country was plunged into a second and then a third national lockdown. All previous mandatory restrictions came into effect and Broadway was forced to suspend trading for several months with no clear idea when that would end.
after the disappointing cancellation of the festival in 2020, organisers are looking forward to this year's festival with an air of optimism and enthusiasm. So Andrew, what have you got in store for us then this year? We, we have an exciting programme, over 50 events, and the important thing with the Arts Festival is arts in the plural. So uh, we cover music, we cover drama, we cover painting, we cover uh, literature, and um, we'll have things like uh, Mr. Stink, the David Williams Entertainment on the Green, Claire Teal and her jazz trio, uh, we'll have uh, The Great Gatsby as another theatre performance, uh, we'll have workshops where people can learn new skills and improve their existing ones. Um, a whole programme of events for all the family, for young people, old people and everyone in between. It sounds great fun. It must have been a huge blow when you couldn't stage it last year. It was a great disappointment because it takes a year of planning to organise an event like this. And, uh, but we have a tremendous management team that uh, runs the festival and organises everything. They were determined to put another festival on this year, at least as good as the one we had to cancel. So that's what we'll be doing June the 4th to June the 13th. And uh, it'll be uh, a great event for Broadway to see the place come alive and to see people enjoying live entertainment. The big thing we've had to do this year is an enormous amount of planning for COVID safety, for social distancing and managing all that. But uh, we're convinced we can put on a festival that uh, meets all those requirements. Seeing the uh, creative side of um, people coming out, uh, the workshops we run is unique, I think, to the Broadway Arts Festival. Uh, people being able to learn skills, to be able to develop existing ones, and to uh, carry on that spirit of creativity, which is what Broadway was famous for when William Morris and John Singer Sargent came here in the 19th century. It's been a creative place ever since. This year's festival was greeted with empty car parks and grandstands, which would normally attract over two and a half million racegoers over the four days, contributing 100 million pounds to the local economy, with over two million pounds lost revenue to Broadway itself. The 8th of March was seen as the first indicator of easing the current lockdown in England, with schools and colleges allowed to open and on the 29th of March, it was the turn of golf clubs, outdoor swimming pools, tennis courts, and up to six people from two different households allowed to meet up outside. Still been teaching, um, but obviously in the initial lockdown we were, I was teaching to timetable from home online. I didn't go to school. Lockdown came too quickly, so I had no time to go to school. I think they've enjoyed it. Yeah, it's so hard when you're missing your friends so bad, badly and you can't even go out anywhere. Seeing you again, it just feels like we're just picking up from where we left off. Uh, yeah, it's been OK, but I did want to go back to school. Yeah, the general socialisation of, of having touch, like contact and touch and hugs and cuddles and kisses with family. Well, it gave me more time to play with my sisters. I know that she said, Mummy, just promise me that for my birthday this year that people will be able to come to my house and we'll be able to have a party together. Uh, well, I like art. Yeah, so do me. I. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Yeah, art's really fun. I like drawing. Yes, I do. Yeah, that's art. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Tuesday the 23rd of March, on this day 12 months ago, a contagion came amongst us, putting us all in peril, with our streets empty and our lives transformed forever. Spring brought a much-needed season of hope and optimism, with new business emerging from the darkness and existing ones looking to bounce back with a new sense of relief and opportunity. The 12th of April is a welcome day for non-essential retail outlets who are finally allowed to welcome shoppers and visitors back. So I'm here today um, to hopefully find my wedding dress. So 
So I'm due to get married, fingers crossed, uh, this August. Um, so this is my first outing, obviously, since everything opened up. So I'm trying to find uh, the dress for the big day. It's a beautiful village. Um, it's lovely to see it come back to life as it is today. I'm sure the local community is excited and I'm definitely excited to be here. It's just nice to come here and, and see that and enjoy, enjoy the beautiful Cotswolds. April the 12th, what's today meant to you? Today's been a long day coming. I am so relieved to be open today. Um, it's just getting back and being able to earn money. Can't, can't tell you how happy I am. So what's it been like missing sort of all the key dates? Easter, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day even? Well, it's all the money that I have tied up in stock that I haven't been able to convert that into sales. Um, yeah, it's been really tough. Um, the government have done their, they have done their bit. Um, they've um, had grants in place and there's bounce back loans that we've been able to have. Um, my landlord's been very good as well. Um, and all these little things help. How optimistic are you for your future now? Very optimistic. Broadway is a beautiful village. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of staycations this year. And I think the village is going to be buzzing. And yeah, and I think people are just going to be so happy to be out back in shops, not buying online. Um, back where they can come into a store and get inspired. And yeah, I, I'm just very optimistic for this year. Hi Andrew, good to meet you. Good afternoon. Hi. And lovely to sit out here and see all these people outside. Well, you timed it just right. It's snowing this morning, but yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. It stays like this for the next few weeks. Seriously, good to see people back though, isn't it? What's it been like today? Uh, learning experience, a bit of fun. We're not too busy, but busy enough to get back in the swing of it. And I say hopefully, when the weather gets better, we should get a lot busier. How's the pandemic been for business then for you? The first lockdown, what was that like? Well, I say it was a bit scary to start with, but we sort of embraced it. We've had to learn new techniques, new things. We've changed the way we operate. Um, yeah, it's not overall. We've, I think we've done all right. You've got a lot of staff. You've got three businesses in Broadway. Have they all fared the, the, the same? Uh, yeah, roughly, yeah, in different ways. Like I say, the, there hasn't been so much business there, but the business that has been has been profitable, so it's been worthwhile. Has it been as bad as you, you thought it might be right at the beginning? No, no I mean, I've, I've probably got the same as everyone else. I panicked for the first few days, didn't know what a furlough was from anything, and you just sort of get on with it, really. I say, I, I never thought I'd be selling ice cream <laughs> on Broadway High Street, but it got us through the summer, and uh, yeah, we have not looked back, really. What about your staff? How have they coped with all of this? Um, we've had to look after them, bring them in. Yeah, when we were furloughed, people used to call by and help us out and what have you. But um, we're only a small team, really. Everyone knows everyone. The manager's got a WhatsApp group. They all speak to each other fairly regularly. So yeah, I don't think it's been too bad for them. I think it really hit more people the third lockdown. Was that how it was for uh, you? Yes, it wasn't good, but we sort of we were well practiced at it. We had our plan B takeaways carried on being takeaways we had a time we fixed the roof we cleaned them decorate the restaurant polished the floors new bathrooms change the air conditioning because you've got a feel you've got a sense for after the first lockdown business took off so you assumed it was going to happen again so you didn't worry cash flow wasn't quite so a worry as it had been the first time you've missed out on a few things though i suppose you've missed out on not missed out on christmas but you missed out on valentine's day mother's day that kind of thing did you so well <laughs> i don't think we did miss out actually because we just we just delivered <laughs> So Mother's Day, I think we did 250 lunches and we were driving all over the place. Same with Valentine's Day. Are you looking forward to the next few months then with optimism? Yeah, I mean, you can't guarantee the weather, but if we, if we, if we had continental weather, I'd be very, very optimistic. With English weather, I'm just optimistic. OK, team, top Broadway deli team. What a, a year it's been for you guys, because just before this pandemic hit, you'd only taken over a few months, hadn't you? So um, take me through then, when lockdown was announced by the Prime Minister, I guess you were all at home. We were, we've got a, a, a WhatsApp group, haven't we? And yeah. um, we just all kind of messaged on there thinking, oh my God, what are we going to do? Because um, we were quite inexperienced at the time, really. We'd only had the business eight months um, and we were only open five days a week then to kind of get used to running a business ourselves because we'd never run a business before. Mm. Um, it was fairly early days from that sense. Yeah. 
I mean, it had been a, as successful as we wanted it to be in the first eight months, kind of just getting to grips with everything. But then to have that hit, you know, within year one was was a challenge. Mm. And um, Billy, what was your reaction when you heard the Prime Minister say, we are going to be in lockdown? <laughs> um, I can't remember, it was a long time ago. <laughs> Stress. I was nervous. Kind of, yeah, it was a, a lot of things, didn't know what to expect. And then you realised that COVID meant lots of restrictions, but you could stay open. Yeah. So far fewer people coming through the store. How did you deal with that? We had to, we had to change the way we operated, really. Um, yeah, we had to go to the customers, essentially. So we went from a shop to a delivery service overnight. It was a big change, but yeah, we delivered in our cars in the first, first couple of months, and now we've bought a van since. But yeah, we'll carry on with the deliveries. But yeah, it's, it's kind of given us the kick at the backside to, to do, the, do the delivery side of the thing, which we've always, always talked about. But um, yeah, never, never really put into, put into practice. It was difficult to kind of balance the running of the shop and the cafe kind of as it was. But then we'd always talked about doing the deliveries, but then never had the time or effort to actually mm. make it happen. So kind of with the scaling back of the rest of the business, it was OK, let's turn our heads to that and, you know, make it work. So the pandemic has been kind of good for you guys, has it? Is that too generalisation, too much of a generalisation to make? <laughs> uh, maybe. It's brought different, a different aspect to the business that we hadn't ever done before. Um, it certainly changed the way it works and we've made a lot of good relationships with our regulars anyway. Mm. We have a very good group of locals that support us very well before all the pandemic and it seems to have solidified that relationship with them you know we had a lot of people saying I've got an elderly mother or father or my aunt and uncle I'm a thousand miles away they need food what can you do I was okay just give them our number get them to call us we'll bring it today you know we had a few people ringing up say, oh, can I book a slot for next Tuesday and so we're not working like that either ring us on the day or ring us the day before and mm. we'll bring it either today or tomorrow and that's fine so you're very um, flexible, and that, that sounds like it's been the key to your success, yeah. really. Yeah, we were, we were delivering kind of newspapers early, early days. We were picking people's prescriptions up. We were doing anything we could just to keep busy as much as... <laughs> and help, helping out the locals and anything. It was... Uh, we yeah. deliver coffee to... Uh, single coffees to people up on the high street, people that can't get out, which is nice. It's a nice thing to do, but does it... I mean, how have profits been over this last year? We've had three lockdowns now. It's, it's hard to tell from early, yeah, it's not been great, but it's been, we've been keeping busy. The, the furlough scheme's been a big, big thing for yeah, us. It's staffing's one of the, obviously, one of the biggest costs. And with the cafe, you have to have a lot of, a lot of hands on deck and then we had to kind of furlough most of the staff, didn't we? Um, I think we kept a few, few kind of full-timers on just to kind of keep the shop running as well. But apart from, apart from that, most of them have been furloughed because they're all kind of cafe. You sound like you've come up with some ingenious ways of, of making the business work. I mean, I love the traffic light system outside the front, and I believe that was your idea, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's just we've got quite a narrow narrow part in the shop, so uh, it's it's very restricted. If it's if it's busy, that's the, the bit of a bottleneck. So we needed a way of controlling people from outside without shouting through the door. So yeah. But on, on a very serious note, has there, was there really any s sleepless nights? Any any real worries about how this was going to pan out for you? There was often a a delay between the announcement and then the kind of rules which would follow and it's that uncertainty in the middle that's that's the difficult bit because you can't plan you can't plan for something you don't know the rules for and the support that all four of you seriously you know the, the support and the camaraderie between you that must have helped a lot yeah, yeah we, we all get on well anyway it's it, i don't think this taking this place on wouldn't have worked had had we not got on um but we all yeah we've all worked here for years before taking it over so we knew, we, knew, we knew what we were getting ourselves into. Do you feel optimistic for the future? Uh, yeah, very yeah. positive. I mean, you know, people are going to stay, stay in the UK for their holidays, they're not going to go abroad. Um, Broadway has a name for itself anyway. You know, it's got lots of cottages in the village, people come here to stay. Um, we saw lots of regular faces today that yeah. we hadn't seen yeah, since nice. the cafe was open yeah. last. And, you know, it was despite the layer of snow this morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, that did put a few people off. It took them a little while to, to make their way out. Um, and gently this morning. Yeah, but you know they came and they all had lunch and coffee and cake and all the usual things that they did and they met up with friends and family and stuff that obviously they haven't been able to for a long time. So just going by how kind of today has started, it's it's nice to see how it's going to go forward. It's I think. Nice, nice to see the village busy as well. There's lots of lives back in the village, so it's nice. It's been a bit lonely some days. <laughs> Life here may never be the same again. 
But Broadway, which has experienced so much over the centuries, will do its level best to preserve its unique reputation and no doubt will look forward to the day when it can consign this grim chapter to its history books.